First of all, from BP's perspective, as the responsible party here, and, and just for context, the reason why BP is the responsible party in this cleanup is because we, along with two other companies, own the oil resource. This was an exploration well that was being, that was being drilled by Transocean Company on behalf of BP. Transocean is a worldwide uh, deep water drilling expert, has had an excellent safety record, and as we all know, tragically, about two weeks ago, they had a catastrophic failure and a fire on their rig, and 11 people are presumed to have died. And uh, I hope that we all remember that and keep that in context as, as this uh, incident goes forward. Um, Transocean, as I said, was drilling the well. All of the equipment, all of the operations there, the people conducting that, uh, that work worked for Transocean. Uh, after the incident, BP responded almost immediately. In fact, some of our response craft were ones that first arrived to help rescue some of the people that were, that were disembarking from the uh, deep water horizon. Uh, it, within hours, we uh, mobilized remote operated vehicles to go down subsurface to try to understand the condition of the blowout preventer. And as you all know, this is the major source of the leak that we've been trying for almost two weeks now to get under control. We don't understand what happened on that platform. We don't understand what the cause of the, uh, of, of the, the, uh, the fire and the explosion was. And we don't understand yet why the blowout preventer, which is a, is a redundant system and has multiple safety devices, including one on the surface of the, of the uh, drilling rig, which we understand was activated before the, uh, in the early minutes after the uh, emergency, why that didn't work, why it's failed. We've been down there with remote operated vehicles trying to shut in manually uh, these uh, blow-up preventers, these, these large uh, pistons and valves that are down there. Uh, our objective there, because it is the simplest and most direct way to stop this leak, is to keep working until we're either successful or have exhausted all possibilities. So we're continue to try that. We're also advancing the uh, response out there on, three on a couple of other fronts. One of them is that we're constructing a containment system. This is simply uh, large, large uh, domes, if you will, that would be lowered down on top of the, uh, the leak, and it would have a piping system that would carry the oil up to a, a vessel on the surface. And this is in 5,000 feet of water, so this has never been done before. This is stretching the boundaries of technology. And the idea there is to recover that oil so that it doesn't end up in the water column or on the surface. That system is being fabricated. It's been, it's been in, uh, in motion for about a week now, and in, within about another week's time, we'll be able to deploy that. The third thing that we're doing at the source is we're drilling a relief well. This is a, a, a long-legged uh, solution, but it is an ultimate solution, where we have a drilling rig, which has already started. It will go down 18,000 feet from the surface of the Gulf of Mexico, it will intersect the existing well that's down there. That's the discovery well that we had Transocean drill for us. And we will put heavy drilling fluids and cement there to seal that up so that that pressure, that gas, that oil that's coming up right now will be stopped. But that's about 90 days out. That is the ultimate solution. Concurrent with that, we've got the surface activities going on. But as you can tell, just looking around by the weather, it's hampered us. It's slowed us down a little bit. It's given us a, a bit of a challenge because we can't have a lot of ocean-going vessels out there when the seas are so rough. But we're, but, but we're still in action. We've been mobilizing boom, we've been deploying all these kinds of assets that you see around here all along the Gulf Coast. We've got about 20, 275,000 feet of boom being staged from Mississippi to Florida. We're adding more every day. We've got volunteers who are out there pre-cleaning beaches. And we're in action and we're, we're working as hard as we can to get the source under control and to be in a position to protect these beaches the best we can. And if oil uh, gets on the beach, we'll be there to clean it up to the standards that people expect. That the, the experts at NOAA tell us that the, the vast majority of this spill is sheen. And sheen is very, very thin and uh, they tell us that in many cases, uh, what you might expect on the beaches would be sort of tar balls and, and those of us who live on the Gulf Coast, I live on the Texas Gulf Coast, know that naturally sometimes we get tar balls that roll up, uh, which, which I'm just trying to characterize uh, what they have told us the nature of sheen impact is. Uh, the weather is, is uh, even though it's hampering some of the offshore activities, it does help by churning up the surf and, and naturally dissipating some of this sheen, so it's kind of a good news, bad news with the weather. Uh, the fact that we have bad weather and we don't have a lot of surface operations, though, doesn't mean that we're sitting still. 
uh, just in the in the update meetings this morning, we we uh, told our people that you know if we can't be out there actually doing some of the things we want, we want to make sure that we're planning so that when the weather does hit, we can hit back and we can hit back hard and really really get after this cleanup in response. Well, first of all, we're telling them that we're sorry that this has impacted their livelihood, and we understand how important this is on the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, our, our chief executive, Tony Hayward, was in Mobile yesterday, meeting with, uh, meeting with some of the elected representatives here and certainly meeting with hey, the I'll Unified Command, which includes not only the federal people, but the state and local people as well. And we're telling them, first of all, that we have a claims process and people who have been damaged by this incident will be compensated. Okay. Have you started drilling the relief well yet? Yes. And who's contracted yeah. to drill Well, the, the relief well has, has started. Um, it'll, again, it'll be about an 18,000 foot, that's uh, 5,000 feet of water and 13,000 feet of subsurface. And the company that's drilling that for us is Transocean because they have worldwide expertise. They have the equipment out there to be able to respond this quickly. And, and again, they've had a, a tremendous safety record. This, this incident is, is such an anomaly and such an unprecedented surprise given the redundancies that are built in, given the track record of a company like Transocean. Um, it's just, it's, it's frustrating to us. It's sad, sad for us because, because people have apparently lost their lives and it's created all of this kind of stress on the folks of the Gulf Coast.